Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer, uh, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, uh, cancer prevention, disability prevention. Um, prevention sometimes takes some discipline in terms of lifestyle, but it's a heck of a lot better than getting uh, a bypass graft or some of the, or uh, having sen becoming senile. This is a, uh, an image of what happens with the mitochondrial uh, aging uh, process and the impact of uh, decreased mitochondrial function on aging. <clears throat> That's called the mitochondrial theory. Why are we talking about that again today? This is, uh, it, it may sound like science, but actually we're talking about a very practical thing. High intensity intervals, uh, HIIT, high intensity interval training. And we're talking about this not just for young people, we're talking about it for older people as well. 65 to 80 year olds, we're going to talk about a study where, a, um, where there were two groups, 18 to 30 and 65 to 80, and they put them through several months of interval training and looked at heart, lung, uh, circulation, performance, also mitochondrial performance. <clears throat> So let's go back then and, and talk about the mitochondria. Again, this is a, a, an image of the mitochondrial uh, process of aging. This first step is uh, damage of the DNA in the nucleus. Well, I mean, if you look at uh, Walter Longo and the um, uh, mimicked fasting activities, his point would be it's not even that the DNA is damaged, it's just that it's not being transcribed. Uh, I think David Sinclair would talk about a uh, lack of transcription of uh, some controlling genes as well. If you look at this second stage, so the first stage is DNA, whether it's DNA damage or a lack of transcription driven by some controlling genes they still start hitting a lot of the same pathways, the pathways used in respiration, and respiration. the center of respiration is the mitochondria. Uh, again, you'll see some names that we mention in other uh, videos, CERT1, or the Sirtuins, by, uh, being researched by David Sinclair at Harvard, AMPK, this, these are impacted by uh, uh, metformin, and again, all help the cell Take food and turn it into energy. So if these metabolic pathways are damaged, then basically you're getting damage in performance of the mitochondria. And the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. So again, this last image shows you get damaged mitochondria, you get uh, damaged neurodegenerative damage, in other words, senility. You get damage to the, to the heart, the uh, lungs, basically aging tissue, and so the human goes from peak health in adult to uh, poorer health as, uh, as an older individual. So who did this research? His name is Shrikumarian Nair. Where is he? He's a faculty member at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. He is a, a cellular biologist who's been doing a lot of work on uh, cellular metabolism, aging, mitochondria, um, again, all of these areas that we're, we've just been talking about. So what did he do? As I said, he took uh, two groups of people. One group is 18 to 30 years old. The other group was 65 to 80 years old. He had them doing um, high-intensity high interval training for, I believe it was three months. And then he did a few things. He looked at uh, performance of the heart, lungs. Um, he, then he looked, actually did biopsies of the muscles and looked at the mitochondria. So uh, this is uh, an unusual study in that he actually did muscle biopsy. You don't see a lot of studies where they've done that. And what that does is it, is, it creates a lot of value for the study because now we can start looking on a looking at the cells looking on an intracellular level at the mitochondria to see what the impact was so here's what we saw or here's what uh, he saw they saw uh, 
on the youngsters, 18 to 30, you had a 28% improvement in heart, lung, and circulation health parameters. In um, the older folks, 65 to 80, you had a 17% improvement. What about the uh, muscle biopsies in the mitochondrial function? 69% improvement of mitochondrial function in the older folks and 49% improvement in uh, the younger group. So the younger group had uh, mitochondria that were already healthier to start with, didn't have quite as much improvement that they could, uh, they could uh, experience, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now, when you see some uh, reviews of the study, one of the reviews said, look, well, it didn't make them younger. And in fact, if you had, if you did high intensity intervals, but you're eating donuts uh, all day long, you're still going to be in bad shape. Uh, I got it. I think we all understand that. But again, this was a great study in that it actually showed improvement of mitochondrial function using uh, muscular uh, muscle biopsies. Now, <clears throat> so what kind of, a lot of my patients are 65 to 80 years old and they're folks that are basically just doing one or two miles of walking three or four times a week for, uh, for their exercise. How can they get a, a high intensity interval? They can walk up hills. They can walk carrying a, a weight vest. They can um, use a bicycle er ergometer, indoor er ergometer, or, a, um, or an elliptical trainer. <clears throat> so how do you measure it? You can measure it with pulse. You can measure it with increased breathing. Um, what's the impact of, uh, of high intensity intervals on, um, on insulin resistance? You know, the number one cause of cardiovascular inflammation. It is the number one uh, exercise that improves insulin resistance. So again, uh, and maybe it's because of this improvement on the mitochondrial function. Uh, Kaching. So, <clears throat> what about uh, interval training for uh, younger people? Again, you can use similar uh, things. You can do it with running. Uh, professional cyclists have a very simple uh, type of high intensity interval training. Uh, very many of them use a 45 second high intensity interval with a 30 second uh, recovery phase. So again, two phases to an interval. The high intensity phase where you're going, <laughs> it's, it, it needs to be high intensity. It, Pulse well over 100, you know, for some of these younger athletes in the 140s, 150s, even some of the older athletes can achieve that, um, but they have to be in very, very good shape compared to uh, the, most, uh, most folks in the 50s or 60s. So, again, back to the cyclists and what they, a lot of them use, 45 second, second high intensity phase, 30 second low intensity phase. That's one interval. Uh, do a warm-up, do five to ten of those intervals, and then do a five-minute cool-down. You're talking about 20 to 30 minutes total for a, an exercise. You don't need three hours in the gym to do these things. Now, <clears throat> are, are, are there other ways to do this? Again, yes, you can run. You can go, go up hills. You can do what's, what are called hill intervals. And each of these has a, uh, a slightly different uh, component. I saw a, uh, an ad once that said, it isn't that diabetes runs in my family, it's that nobody in my family runs. I get it, I understand, and that's certainly part of the process. But I, again, I think as a culture, we've gone too far to the other side. We think everything is lifestyle, and lifestyle is very important, but we forget about the biology and the genetics. Thank you.